Good morning. Welcome to the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church in Waycross, Georgia. I'm Pastor Randy Richardson. We're going to start off singing a chorus that says, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. I hope there's a river flowing out of you today. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Praise forevermore. He's 
says only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Hallelujah. have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 7, John 7, verse 37 through 39. I've entitled this message, If Any Man Thirst. If any man, any woman thirst. Let's read the text together. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. It was the last or the eighth day of, of the Feast of Tabernacles, a feast that the Jewish people celebrated uh, for the years that they were in the wilderness and how God kept his hand upon them during that time in the desert while they lived in tents. And each one of the previous seven days prior to the eighth day, the priests would bring in golden pitchers and they would have water from the pool of Siloam. And these symbolized God's protection. But on the eighth day, they would have empty vessels. They would have empty pitchers. No water to symbolize and represent the prophecies of the coming of the Spirit of God that would refresh the people of God and that would pour out an abundance of God's blessings in their lives. This eighth day, being empty, Jesus comes forward and they are uh, celebrating the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Lord. And Jesus saw this and he cries, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being out of his belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water that's the promise that you and I have today but it starts if any man if any woman thirst 
So many people today are thirsting after God, but they're trying to fill that void with all of the things of the world, with relationships and, and, and uh, illicit, re illicit relations and careers and new homes and boats and toys and recreation and other things. But God wants us to realize that when we're thirsty for him, only Jesus can satisfy that thirsty heart. Every man gets thirsty for the things of the Lord. And the things that they fill it with will never satisfy. You will only be satisfied when you stoop and drink of the Lord. Jesus shouts to this crowd, do you want what the prophets talked about with the Holy Spirit? Do you want this great infilling? Joel 2, 28 through 29, Joel prophesied about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days. I will pour out my spirit. Do you want what Joel prophesied? Do you want what Isaiah prophesied about in Isaiah 55, 1, where he said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. In other words, what God has to give you isn't going to cost you materially. You don't have to pay. You don't have to be of a certain social class to be able to receive the things of God. Isaiah 44, 2 through 3 says, Thus saith the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen for. I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. Oh, saints of God, God wants to pour out on the dry, thirsty ground of your mind, your soul, your emotions. He wants to pour out himself and his spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Do you want what Isaiah prophesied about? Do you want what Joel prophesied about? Do you want what David prophesied about? What he longed for, Psalm 42, 1, he said, As the deer panteth for the water brook, so my soul longs after you and pants after thee, O God. David said, I am so thirsty for God. He had an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. He had an intimate relationship with God the Father and with the Holy Ghost. He had that time with God as he worshiped the Lord. David was in a constant state of thirst for God. You ever gone outside and you're mowing the grass, pulling weeds or working in the yard, working under the car, whatever it might be, and all of a sudden you just get so thirsty you can't hardly stand it. Your mouth feels like the cotton is growing inside of it. It's just so, so thirsty. You go to the house and and, and you get you something to drink and it just isn't enough and you just drink and drink and drink and drink and drink until finally your body says, all right, you've replaced the liquid and now you're satisfied. Jesus said, if you are thirsty, I am the only one that can quench your thirst. But he says, if you're thirsty, here's how you get satisfied. It starts off by let him Come. Let him come. The next move you have to make is you realize after you realize that you're thirsty is you have to get up and do something about it. You can't just sit there and stay thirsty and expect other people to satisfy you. I'm thirsty. If I'm thirsty, you can drink till your heart is content, but it will never satisfy me because I have to drink for myself. The pastor can't force you to be hungry for God. The, 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 the denomination cannot force you 
to seek the face of God. If I'm thirsty, I have to drink for me. I have to drink for me. No one can quench your spiritual thirst but you. There have been times where mamas have drugged their children to the altar. And I knew when they were coming that they really didn't want to be there. And I, and I had to just try to be as diplomatic as I could. And I would say to them, is this something that you would like? And if they said yes, I would proceed and pray. If they said not really, then I would say, well, let me just pray for you that God will reveal himself to you. And uh, maybe one day you will want it for yourself. But many times those mamas would drag them, those grandmas would drag them down to the altar. And saints, I'm here to tell you, they didn't get anything because they didn't want to be there. Folks, you've got to want to drink, to be able to drink. So then he says, once you come to me, then he says, do something else. You got a drink. You know, a lot of people come to the house of the Lord. They'll tune in and listen to the broadcasts, and they'll they'll uh, do all these things, but they won't drink. They get so close. They like to see the moving of the Spirit. They like to be in a service where they can feel God. But they get so close, but they don't yield for themselves. And that's what God is calling you for this morning. He wants you to stoop and drink. He wants you to drink of the water of life. He wants you to, to be filled to overflowing with his spirit. You have to be the one to lift your hands to heaven and say, I surrender to you, God. You have to be the one that worships the Lord. You have to be the one that cries out, Lord, I love you and I praise you and I give you glory. Hallelujah, glory to the name of the Lord and worship God with your lips. Matthew 3, 11, Jesus said, I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, I'm so thankful to God for that precious experience called a baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that God has given me that power. I'm glad he's given me that infilling, that flowing, that that river of life flowing through me so that when I'm going through hard times and difficult times, he is my friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is there to help me through every storm and every difficulty. I may not be spared from this or that, but he'll help me to go through it with him holding my hand. Hallelujah. Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. God wants to put power on your life. He wants to endue you with power so that when times are tough, you have a tough God that sticks it out with you. I was working in the yard at home this week, and, 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 and I just was, you know, the devil was just tormenting my mind with, with uh, worry and fret and and I immediately, I got my Holy Ghost music out and I began to listen to it and, and, and it blesses me. And as I was listening to it, all of a sudden, all those cares and doubts and worries just pew, slipped me. They were gone. They were gone. Why? Because when the presence of God floods your soul, you don't care about tomorrow. You don't care about what could happen to your body or what could happen in a relationship or what could happen in your finances or what could happen in any situation that you're going through on your job or your neighborhood. He is there to refresh your spirit and help you through difficult times. That's the promise of the Father. Acts 2, 1 through 4, that great glorious day when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Then here's what Jesus said. Here's what they said. Jesus said to the crowd, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly 
shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. That is our text. And when we couple that with Acts chapter 2, as these fellows laid in that room, those men and that women, prayed for 10 days seeking the face of God, then God rewarded them with that glorious baptism in the Holy Spirit. This was that rivers of living flowing out of them. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the illustration there is that they had uh, tongues of fire upon their head. Well, Jesus is the water of life. When the water of life gets inside of us and the power of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God comes upon us. When fire touches water, what happens? It begins to boil. And there should be out of our innermost being a boiling over experience that comes from our relationship with the power of God. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Our belly is not just literally this, this thing that holds our food. It's talking about our emotional man. It's talking about our soul, the heart, the seat of our emotions, our thought, our feeling, our choices. And my emotional man gets hungry. Sometimes what I feed my emotional man is worry and doubt and unbelief. So I've got to replace the diet. I've got to change the food. And so I've got to make sure that out of my belly is flowing rivers of living water, the power of God and the presence of God. I can get so dry in my emotions, so numb, feeling like I just can't go another step another day. I can't deal with another situation, another struggle, another uh, uh, problem, another tear. So in my emotions, in my belly, where my emotions are, good and bad, originate, I can have the Spirit of God flowing out of me. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34 through 35, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. He went on to say in Matthew 15, 18 through 20, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Romans 8, 26 through 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You see, God knows our heart. He knows our spirits. He knows that's where everything originates. Every doubt, every, every uh, worry, every fret, they all come right here from our emotional man. Uh, anytime we have anything that, that uh, comes, it comes from the heart. And he said, I want to change your heart so much so that it's got a constant river of living water flowing through you to purge you and clean you up. Hallelujah. God knows what's in your heart. He's able to search your emotions and search your heart. He can tell you what's blocking the flow, what's hindering your flow. What is it? Is it pride? I don't want people to see me maybe crying or laughing or lifting my hands. I, I, I'm a private person and I'm, I'm concerned that other people will see me laughing or they'll see me crying, rejoicing, jumping up and down maybe. If I get let myself go too much, who knows what I'll do? You know, is it fear? I'm fear of the unknown, afraid what God might do for you. Laziness, you just don't want to exert the energy. Disobedience, maybe you know there's something in your life needs to go and you don't want it to go and so you feel like you don't deserve anything because of your disobedience. Allowing the cares of this world to plug you up and overtake you. Your mind's so full of worry and doubt and unbelief that you just can't even worship God for who he is and thank the Lord. 
Colossians 3, 15 and 16 says, But let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. As the peace of God is allowed to rule in your heart, the Holy Spirit is uninhibited, and He can move and do in you. He can move on you to have psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. This morning I got up, and there was a song in my heart. It wasn't a song I had thought about in probably 10, 15 years, but all of a sudden it just popped up in my spirit because that was what the Holy Spirit wanted me to focus on today in my worship of the Lord. Allow psalms, hymns, spiritual psalms to get in your heart. Allow that word of God to stay in your heart. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All saints, whether the word is through the preaching, teaching, or the singing, it should penetrate down to your spirit and separate what is flesh and what is spirit, what is joy and what is sorrow, what is uh, the presence of God and what's the presence of, the, of Satan. Hallelujah. He says, it shall flow. Flow. What does it mean to flow? It means that there's no blockages. It means it's just coming, 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 coming. Okay? God wants to move through your life. But it, he wants it to flow. So sometimes you just got to give up and give it to God. Sometimes you just got to yield to the Lord and say, God, I'm tired of being in control. I'm tired of handling this in my own power. I want living water flowing through my life and through my mind. I don't want some dead, dried up, lifeless uh, liquid in me. I want the flowing, cool, refreshing water of life. Hallelujah. We sang that chorus in the beginning. I've got a river of life flowing out from me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out from me. Spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Spring up, O oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, O oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. I want that springing up inside of me, that old wonderful well of living water. Hallelujah. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Now, I'm not talking about just what you received at conversion. I'm talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Have you received that outpouring of the Holy Ghost on your life? If you haven't, you need to be seeking God. You need to be praying every day, fill me to overflowing, Lord, and begin to seek the face of God and let him flow like a river in your life. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we want your river of living water flowing in us. And Lord, it requires us to empty ourselves more of you and less of me. More of you, Lord, and less of me. I want more of you, God, and less of me. More faith and less doubt. And I want more of your power and less of my struggles. Oh, God, pour out your spirit upon every person listening to the sound of my voice. Every person that's listening by way of internet today. I pray, Father, that you would pour out your spirit upon them even right now. Holy Ghost, Fall upon them in the name of Jesus. Let them receive the glorious baptism in the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. You keep seeking the Lord. And you expect God to 
fill you to overflowing, and he will always do it. Praise God. We love you. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Send your tithes to 816 Columbus Street, Waycross, Georgia, 31503. Your missions offerings, send them to the same address. We love you, and if we can ever do anything for you, please don't hesitate to call. Have a blessed rest of your week.